What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to look at the 2019 Calc BC free response question number five. So let's get started. For part A, we want to find the value of k, where k is greater than zero, such that the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals zero is equal to six. Now that entire last statement, we could just translate into f prime of zero is equal to six. It's very important for the AP test that you're able to just take these long sentences and write them in a math equation because now we have a very clear objective. And what we're doing here, we wanna take the derivative of f of x so that we could use this information that we just translated. So to take the derivative of f of x, it's probably a little bit easier for us if we get rid of this fraction and write it as x squared minus two x plus k to the negative first power. Anytime I could avoid using quotient rule, I do. And in this case, I could just do power rule and chain rule. So the derivative in the next step we're going to do the derivative of the outside and we'll have negative one times the base and our new exponent is going to be to the negative second after we subtract one but we have to remember to multiply by the derivative of the inside and we're going to have two times x minus two so that's the derivative of this quadratic expression here because remember k is constant so the derivative of k just goes to zero so then what we could do is just clean this up a little bit f prime of x the negative will leave on top with the 2x minus 2 factor and on bottom we're going to have x squared minus 2x plus k to the second power so we're just going to send this negative 2 exponent back down to the denominator so now we're going to make use of this information here that f prime of 0 is equal to 6 so we're going to plug 0 into the derivative we just found and the minus is just going to stay there we'll have 2 times 0 minus 2 which is going to give us negative 2 and in the denominator, we're going to have 0 minus 0 plus k to the second, which is just going to give us k to the second power. So that minus minus 2, we could change to a positive 2 over k squared. But now think about what we have. We have that f prime of 0 is equal to 2 over k squared, but we also have that f prime of 0 is equal to 6. So we could set 2 over k squared equal to 6 and then just solve this resulting equation. So we could cross multiply. We'll have 6 times k squared is equal to 2, and we'll divide both sides by 6. So from here, we could say that k squared is equal to a third, and then we'll take the square root of both sides. Now, in this case, we don't have to worry about the plus minus idea because they're telling us that k is going to be greater than 0. So we're just going to say that k is equal to positive square root 1 over 3, or we could just say 1 over the square root of 3. Now, if this answer bothers you, this is our final answer. Some people prefer to rationalize the denominator. You could always multiply the, to, uh, the top and bottom by square root 3 over square root 3. And we could also say that k is equal to square root 3 over 3. But that's not a necessary step. This answer is fine. For part b, we have k equals negative 8. And we're evaluating the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x, which is 1 over x squared minus 2x. And remember, k is being replaced by minus 8. So to evaluate this integral, we're going to do partial fractions. And the technique for this is we factor the bottom, and that factor is to x minus 4 times x plus 2, this quadratic here. And we want to write this as two separate fractions. We want to have some number over x minus 4 plus some other number over x plus 2. And the goal why we do this is because it makes these two separate integrals much easier to evaluate than this one integral here where that denominator is very tricky to deal with. So we call these numerators a and b and we have to do algebra now to solve for the constants a and b. And the technique is that we multiply the first fraction here by x plus 2 over x plus 2 and that would have a matching denominator with this fraction on the left. And the second fraction here with the b in the numerator needs an, another factor on bottom of x minus 4. So now all three of these fractions have matching denominators. So in a sense, their denominators just cancel out. And we don't have to worry about any discontinuous stuff going on here because x equals 4, x equals negative 2 is outside that interval from 0 to 1. So this function is continuous from 0 to 1, so we have no problems with continuity. And from here, once the denominators cancel, we'll have the equation 1 equals a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 4. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to erase the stuff that we wrote here next to this original equation because once we solve for a and b, 
it's going to be easier to see what our new integrals are going to be without all that extra clutter on the side. So that step of multiplying top and bottom and getting to this equation, you could do that part in your head. Now from here, you're going to have x is equal to negative 2. So the reason why we want to plug in x equals negative 2 is because it's going to get this first factor to cancel out completely. And that would give us 1 equals, we'd have a times 0, that would cancel out, and we'd have b times negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. So I'd have negative 6b. And when we solve for b, this is going to give us b is equal to negative 1 over 6. So you strategically pick values of x that get these factors to cancel. And the next x value is going to be x equals 4. That gets this factor to cancel out. And that would just give you 1 equals a times 4 plus 2 is going to be 6a. And now solving for a, we're going to get a is equal to positive 1 over 6. So now that we have the values for a and b, we essentially plug them into this expression here, and that allows us to rewrite our integral in a form that we could actually evaluate. So now we're going to have two separate integrals. The integral from 0 to 1 of a over x minus 4, and a is equal to 1 over 6. So I could write 1 over 6 over x minus 4 like this, but I prefer to just write the 1 over 6 out in front. It just looks a little bit neater, and this is our first integral. Now the second integral from 0 to 1 has a denominator of x plus 2, and since that corresponds to our b value, our b value is negative 1 over 6, so I'm just going to write minus 1 over 6 with the constant in front, and that's our second integral. I find it easier to write the coefficients in front. It just makes it a little bit neater and easier to evaluate. Now for the next part here, we're just going to do the antiderivatives. So we're going to have 1 over 6, natural log, absolute value of x minus 4. And for the second antiderivative, we're going to have minus 1 over 6, natural log, absolute value, x plus 2. And we're going to have one collective piece here to represent the limits of integration because they have the same limits of integration. Now before we start plugging in the limits of integration, I'm going to do a little bit of algebra first. We could factor out a 1 over 6 and we'll have natural log of this expression minus natural log of this expression. But remember, anytime you have subtraction of logs, you could combine the logs by division. And we'll have the first expression, x minus 4 on top, and the second expression, x plus 2 on bottom. And remember, this is going from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So now we plug in, we'll leave the constant in front, and we're going to have natural log, absolute value, and if we plug in 1, you're going to have 1 minus 4, that's negative 3, over 1 plus 2, which is equal to positive 3. And this is going to give you natural log, absolute value, negative 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So that piece cancels. And then you'll have natural log after the subtraction, absolute value 0 minus 4 is negative 4, over 0 plus 2 is 2. So when we simplify this, this is going to be natural log of positive 2. So we'll have 1 over 6 times negative natural log of 2, which is going to be equal to negative 1 over 6 natural log of 2. So this is our final answer to part b. For the last part of this question, we want to evaluate the definite integral from 0 to 2 of f of x when k is equal to 1. So when we set this up, we've got 1 over x squared, and we've got minus 2x, and now we have a plus 1 at the end here. So for this integral, the first thing we could do here is factor the bottom. And when we factor it, we're going to have the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 over x minus 1 squared dx. And just glancing at this, you could see at x equals 1, this expression would be undefined, and 1 is a value between 0 and 2, which tells us we have an improper integral, and we have a discontinuous integrand. Now, sketching 1 over x minus 1 squared isn't so bad. It has a vertical asymptote at 1. And if we look at this, you could see on either side of the graph, to the left and right of 1, the graph is going up to positive infinity. So in this question, what we're looking for is the area from 0 to 2. So that's on either side of this asymptote. And what we're looking for exactly is we want to see if this curve gets to the asymptote fast enough that this area converges. Otherwise, this area is going to spill out to infinity. So what we need to do to evaluate this is we're going to break this integral into two pieces. We're going from 0 to 1, and we have x minus 1 to the negative 2. So I just want to rewrite this so the antiderivative step is easier. And we have the integral from x equals 1 to x equals 2. 
And once again, the problem here is at x equals 1. So these are the values that we have to replace when we set up our limits. So we want to replace this value here and this value here. So when we set this new integral up, we just have to think that we could replace it with something like the letter b. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to b, and we're going to take the limit as b approaches 1. And if we look at this graph again, you could see that on the interval from 0 to 1, we're approaching 1 on the left side. We're on the left side of 1. So this is going to be the limit approaching 1 from the left side of x minus 1 to the negative 2 in our integral here. And for the second piece, notice the lower limit is the problem. But this time around, we're going to use the letter c because we don't want to use the same letter for this. And we're going to be approaching 1 from the right side because when we're on the interval from 1 to 2 and we want to get close to 1, we're going to be approaching 1 from the right side. And we have the integral from c to 2 of x minus 1 to the negative second power. So the rest of this now is just all technique. And we're going to just go by one, we're just going to go one by one here. And we'll start with this integral on the left. So what we should do first is do the antiderivative. So we're going to have the limit as b approaches 1 on the left side of, we've got x minus 1 to the negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. And when we divide by this new exponent, it just puts a minus in front. And this is being evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals b. So to complete this, now we just have to substitute the limits and then subtract. So we have the limit as b approaches 1 from the left side. And think of this as a negative 1 in front, that minus sign. And now what we have is we plug in b. We have b minus 1 to the negative 1, which is 1 over b minus 1. And now we have minus. So the negative 1 we're just keeping outside as a factor. And now we're going to substitute in 0. So we have 0 minus 1 to the negative first, which is going to give us negative 1 to the negative first. And if we think about this, this works out to positive 1 at the end because we're going to have 1 over negative 1 to the first is negative 1. And when we subtract negative 1, we get a plus 1. So the last thing we could do before we evaluate this is we have the limit as b approaches 1 from the left side. And we've got negative 1, 1 over b minus 1 plus 1. But once it's in this form, even how we had it before, we have enough to evaluate this integral. So what you want to think about is the graph of just, let's say I look at a graph of 1 over x minus 1. This is the easiest way to read limits. Otherwise, you have to use number sense to evaluate this. And you would see that this is approaching negative infinity. And you'd have negative infinity times negative 1 going to positive infinity. But otherwise, if you look at this graph, you'd see that on the left side of 1, the graph is heading down to negative infinity. So I have, once again, negative infinity plus 1 is heading towards negative infinity. But when I multiply by negative 1, this whole limit here is heading towards positive infinity, which means that this limit diverges. And what we can conclude here is that if this integral diverges, if just one of the pieces diverges, that means that the entire integral that we started with diverges as well. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the fifth question of the AP Free Response BC 2019. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.